That's something a little bit different today, something a little bit DIY. Now, the situation I've got at the moment is my uh, Phono preamplifier is connected to my uh, main amplifier using these cheapo car audio cables. Now they're decent, they're better than your, your standard patch leads, they are shielded and they work reasonably well. But they are cheap and the whole car audio fitting kit only cost about £20 and it included speaker wire and mains cable and uh, sort of junction blocks and all the rest of it. They're cheap cables. They're also about five metres long and I need cables approximately three metres long. So they're completely uh, over the top lengthwise. And I so said the quality just isn't good enough. They are currently the weak link in the chain and that's something that needs to be addressed. Now I have decided to actually make the cables, 3 meter RCA interconnect cables myself. And while I'm making this one long pair I tend to make a batch of cables. Now I've bought uh, the various parts to make the cables a while back and I was waiting to actually buy the uh, actual wire itself uh, when it was available on sale. But I've actually spotted in my parts box, box I've got so much spare wire anyway I can easily knock the cables together. Um, without having to order anything. So, the cables that I'm going to use are all Kimber style cables. As you can see here from the thing they have, the, the Kimber type weave. Um, it has no actual shielding, but the weave itself acts as a, a type of shielding, as a type of sort of rejection uh, aerial and a way of uh, sort of balancing the noise and reducing the noise and in my experience it works very very well indeed. Now these are two Kimber tonic cables in the United States I think it's called uh, PJB and in Britain we get nice white and uh, sort of copper colour in America it's red, uh, blue and black and doesn't look that brilliant. But uh, it's the basic Kimber cable but even though it's basic it's still very good and these are a mini jack sort of fittings on the end I don't need them anymore one's one metre long and the other's a metre and a half so that immediately gives me some cable to be using. The other three pieces are of cable that have copper cable are also Kimber cable, this time Kimber Tambra, and they are all subwoofer leads that I've bought uh, on eBay cheaply. One's five metres long, one's three, and one is two. And I bought them with the express purpose of just buying them for the wire and the connectors as well. And if you buy, say, a set of stereo interconnect leads, you've got left and right. They, they fetch a fair bit on eBay, maybe half what they go for at retail, a bit more, but the subwoofer cables aren't sought after, and they go very, very cheaply indeed. So you get a very long piece of wire for very, very little money. And if you're going to do DIY work, they're absolutely ideal. And that gives me a fairly large amount of cable, and of course, it gives me my 3 meter cable that I want. I've got one at 5 meters, that can be cut to 3 meters, and I have another, of course, at 3 meters already, so I've got my 3 meters cable and another four metres of cable on top of that to make uh, other interconnects as well. Now, we also need the plugs. And I've got the plugs here. Again, bought on eBay. They're uh, RCA plugs. They're special locking plugs. And you actually have to undo the collar. You push them in and then you actually tighten the collar back up to lock them in place. And they have anodised uh, bases on the... Uh, rings on the bases of them. One's uh, sort of white, one's red, sort of silver and red. Anodized, gold plated, lovely matte uh, metal finish. These things are very, very heavy, very, very weighty. I just took a chance on them on uh, eBay. The picture looked good. And uh, But sometimes when you buy things like that, the, the end product's a little bit cheap and nasty. These on the other hand are very, very nice indeed. They're nicely designed and they're very, very well made. And they look almost exactly like um, plugs that are made by the Japanese company Furotec so I'd imagine they are actually uh, sort of reverse engineered uh, sort of rip-offs of those plugs but um, even so very very good and very very good value I think they're coming a little bit over three pounds each but frankly um, seeing the quality of the things they're easily worth it right next up I want braid to actually go over the, the wire I don't want the wire to be bare I want it to be covered to uh, help protect it. So I've got a, a huge amount of uh, cable braiding to uh, go over the cables and it means my cables will end up being black um, when they're finished. Also got the heat shrink wrap in various colours. Huge box of stuff there and I've actually got more in my parts box as well. Now 
and here is the finished product, or at least one end of it. Here are the nice uh, RCA lockable plugs, and there is the Kimber cable, albeit wrapped in the uh, black sheathing. This cable has to go behind furniture, through furniture, on the floor, near hi-fi equipment, etc. And you've got to remember it is three metres long. And I just wanted to protect the cables. And get the rest of the cable into view, you kind of get the idea. It's a very, very long cable. And uh, so I just wanted to protect it. It gives it a nice uniform look. I quite like the, the very plain black look um, that it has. And that's it. Now this isn't a tutorial video on how to make uh, cables. I'm not going to show me sort of doing the uh, soldering and uh, all the rest of it. It's just showing you what I'm currently doing uh, with my turntable setup. So, how are they used? So, just to show you how the things are connected up. It goes as follows. The turntable itself has captive leads built in, RCA interconnect leads, which go and plug into the phono preamplifier, which is this unit here. The phono preamplifier sits near the turntable uh, on the turntable stand. Now, the amplifier itself, which is here, is about three meters away. This does actually have a phono stage built in, but it's so far away that I can't use the turntable directly into it. It has to go into a separate unit. And this blue cheap lead, say car audio lead, five metres long, has currently been connecting this to this. The new lead will replace that blue lead. And I say I need a three metre length to connect the two together. And uh, as I say, it just replaces this lead. But just to show the equipment from the back, you can see the captive leads from the turntable here plugging into the back of the phono preamplifier goes into the moving magnet inputs as that's uh, the type of cartridge that I'm using and the earth wire goes to the, the earth point on the back of here. The leads that go to the amplifier come out of the top and it goes down this long wire remembering this is normally three meters away from this and then goes into here. Now it's very important to remember this is a very very weak signal through here and then this is boosted to a line level signal that can then go into here. I mean I could put cable extensions on here and go directly into this amp but it's a long way for a very very weak signal to travel and it would suffer from a significant amount of degradation by the time it reached here and it just isn't really a viable way of doing things. Now whenever you're using passive cables and these RCA interconnects are passive cables that link one bit um, to another you want to keep them as short as possible and using a five meter lead here when I only need three meters is silly where possible you want to use uh, the minimum length that you can get away with. That doesn't mean they need to be tight and pulling on the sockets and causing a problem you just want them to reach easily and sort of cleanly without any problems but with no excess wire which is why the custom cables that I've made have made to a three meter length. The other problem with these wires is they're cheap. They're pretty cheap and nasty. And well, you can see there actually the the plugs don't work particularly well. They're actually quite loose. And all I need to do is sort of pull. You can see it's just absolutely pathetic. The other one's tight. That one's bad. Just cheap shoddy uh, materials used to make the product. So I'll take those off now. Now I'm going to fit the new plugs onto the back. And you've got to remember these are locking plugs the sleeves unscrew and then screw back up and as you screw them further forward they tighten up the plugs so they actually grip the sockets well so whenever you put this type of plug on it's vital that you unscrew in fact if you ever buy any interconnects and you find that they're too tight to fit they might be the locking type try unscrewing the collars first before you decide that they're no good anyway you put them in red always goes to red and the other colour is sometimes white, sometimes black. In this case it's white on here and black on there. But red, red's always to red. And then once they're in place, if I can, you tighten the collars up. And that is lovely and tight. and tighten the other one up. There's no way they are coming off that anytime soon. So not only are they very practical in that they're firmly locked in place once you fit them on. It also gives a very good electrical contact uh, for the duration. Very good design of plugs. They can be fiddly to fit if you've got difficulty getting access to the back of your equipment. Um, but if you can use them, I say wherever possible, I do like to use uh, locking plugs on my RCA interconnects. And then of course this needs to be plugged into my main amplifier. Now it's very important because this is already a phono preamplifier, you do not plug these into the phono stage on 
your amplifier. In fact, I've actually put little caps over the top of the phono stage so I don't accidentally plug anything into it. It needs to go to one of the line level inputs. In this case, I'll use uh, AUX1. And uh, yeah, these have got uh, the set of locking collars on. It is important to undo them first. And uh, yeah, you just put them in as you'd expect to, and then tighten them up. I say once they're done, they are lovely and tight. There's no way they're going to pull out at all. It's very, very good uh, tight fit and finish. And of course, I've got my three meter of cable in between, remembering, of course, these two units uh, normally sit very far apart from each other. Now, I would say to anybody watching this video, it's simply that you need to use decent interconnects on your equipment. They don't need to make DIY cables, that's just what I wanted to do. But you do need to use reasonable things. I mean, don't use these type of patch leads. These are the sort of things that come free with, well, pretty much everything. They are cheap and nasty garbage. They work, but they're rubbish. You need to replace them with a better cable, something that's got decent conductors and a good uh, shield on it. It's absolutely vital if you want good sound, if you want high fidelity performance. This isn't hi-fi. This just just get you up and going sort of consumer level audio. It's not a hi-fi product. Now, you do not need to spend a fortune on cables. You can just get away with using reasonable ones. These blue, say car audio ones are reasonable. They're shielded uh, and they work. They certainly gave significantly better performance than these, especially over the length. These over, say, five meter length would be pretty bad. But these are significantly better, and they're just what I had lying around. But you can go on the high street and buy things that are significantly better than these for little money. These are uh, from Maplin Electronics, a high street store in the UK, and I believe they're a worldwide store. And uh, I think they're about twelve ninety nine for seventy five centimeter length. You know, the cost of one vinyl record or two CDs, and you've got your cable problem sorted. Good quality plugs decent quality shielding they look pretty flashy as well in the nice sheathing that they've got and as I say very very little money another example would be these cables these are monoprice cables an American company very very cheap cables and again decent plugs decent cable they've got large gauge wire inside and decent shielding and if you live in America these are very very cheap indeed if you live elsewhere you have to import them which adds uh, the postage adds quite a bit to the cost but they're still very very cheap cables you do not need to spend a lot of money on cables just to get uh, the cable sorted. Don't use rubbish like this. I've seen people on YouTube showing off their equipment, sometimes showing off the new cartridge that they bought for their turntable, proudly showing how good it is. And you see the cables they're using, and they're using these. Buying that new cartridge and then running your system with rubbish like this. Not a good idea. Not when for just a few dollars you could have replaced them with something like this. Or, uh, let's say if you live in the UK, something like this for a few pounds. Don't overlook your cabling on your system. It's not a big deal. Some people do focus on well, what cables they're using far too much. The equipment's more important, but you do need good cables to connect everything together. You just need to be a little bit proactive, spend a little bit of money, a little bit of time fitting them, and then you can forget about them. You know, they just sit at the back of your equipment. They're just passive things that connect things together. And then you can get on with listening to your music, uh, but listening to your music in a, a higher quality. So if you're going to take anything from this video, it's simply that. Use decent interconnects on your hi-fi equipment, not just your turntable, not your phono stage, but everything. Use decent interconnects throughout. So what difference have these cables actually made to uh, my system, to my hi-fi rig? Now, first things first, just a practical issue, is that these locking plugs are just very, very nice to use. They feel very nice and they're just very practical. They give a very good mechanical and electrical connection. Uh, onto the equipment, unlike the cheap blue cables that I had, which were rather loose and uh, sort of rather badly uh, manufactured. So that's the first thing. But as far as the sound quality goes, using these cables, the first thing you notice is they're slightly uh, clearer. The, the uh, to use a hi-fi analogy, the music comes from a blacker background. Uh, but the thing that really strikes you when you listen to it is just how much more energy comes through. The music is much faster. Now, by that, I don't mean it's speeded up. But you know, the leading edge transients and notes just come through much, much quicker, much more kick. The music's more dynamic and it's more natural. It just flows so much better than it does through these cables. It's much more alive and it's just much more real sounding. In fact, the difference is slightly more than I was expecting. In fact, I should have done this mod ages ago. Uh, just Sometimes it takes a while to get round to things. But it's a very, very worthwhile upgrade. 
and so the cost of these cables, even if I had to go out and buy all the, the parts new, the cost of these cables is still relatively low in the context of my Hi-Fi rig and the benefit it has brought has been well worthwhile. So I would say to anybody with your Hi-Fi equipment, not just turntables, but all of your Hi-Fi, do not neglect your cabling. It really does make a difference to the sound quality. Right, that's it for this uh, turntable update. Uh, another one will be coming fairly shortly. But uh, as always, thanks for watching.